Uh, hi, uh, Conan. Uh, nice to meet you. And uh, let me introduce. Yes, this is NFT Labs. So we are the influential NFT um, program in China and Asia. So mm. we are inviting you to be the first guest of our interview. So welcome. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Can you um, uh, introduce uh, briefly introduce uh, Async Art and yourself first? Sure. Absolutely. So um, Async Art is a creation platform for making dynamic and interactive NFTs. We've pioneered programmable art, art and music that can change based on real world events and data or by communities of collectors who co-own aspects of a work. So this is made possible by layers. On Async, creators can distribute their work into layers and tokenize them individually for ownership and control. Artists can imbue these layers with abilities that the owner can execute at any time. So abilities such as state change, position, rotation, or scale. Um, so I'm the founder and CEO of Async Art, and I got my start initially as a DeFi developer and eventually into NFTs through a virtual world called CryptoVoxels. Yeah. Uh, CryptoVoxels is like an online web-based world, and I began leasing virtual gallery space to artists back in 2019. Okay. Um, so um, how do you think to enter NFT field? And can you share some interesting stories of it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so near the end of 2019, I, you know, I was collecting a lot of NFTs, but I wanted to create some art of my own. And while I had collected, you know, hundreds of NFTs, I felt that most, if not all, didn't fully utilize the digital medium. So uh, I'm a game developer. And so I started with a concept where the viewer, essentially the player, could own an aspect of the digital painting and co-create with the artist. So this is where the concept of a layered work came into play. And at a certain point, I decided to make a platform for other artists to come in and use the tool rather than myself, as I myself am not an artist. Um, so the initial Genesis piece on the platform is called The First Supper. And yeah. it was a collaboration between 13 of, at the time, top selling crypto artists. And these all artists all came together and contributed one or more layers. And it was the largest crypto art collaboration at the time. And, you know, this is a, the beginning of 2020. And so it was a, a big milestone because the master and the layers collectively sold for about $80,000 USD, which was a record in early 2020. Wow, that's really, yeah, that's really a big volume. So is this one on your background, the First Supper? Yeah, so this is the current state of the First Supper right now. Uh, you can see the, oh, the, oh, yeah. So the center character, you know, you have artists like Hakatau, uh, yeah. X Copy. You have Coldy, M. Libchi, uh, Matt Kane over here, yeah. Rutger Van der Toss, um, Blackbox.art, Josie behind, um, Shortcut, Conning Digital, like a lot of the, yeah, really OG art crypto artists. Um, as far as I know, I don't think they've ever come together to collaborate like this before because it's such a big gathering of, of people. Uh, okay, so for content wise, uh, it's a big collection of these artists and for as of the volume history, it's really big, right? Yeah. Yeah, so it's making history. Yeah, this is a historic piece for sure for NFT uh, art. And okay, I'm so interested about your first piece of uh, layers art, uh, artwork. Can you yeah. share something with us? Where is this going and where is it now? Um, oh, so like, yeah. So Async Art, you know, regularly powers the largest crypto art collaborations in the space. Um, actually, I can show you if, do you want me to screen share? Um, uh, okay, uh, actually, I mean, you told us that uh, when you first entering the NFT field, right? You uh, have yeah. some, some work of your own. Uh, of your, ah, yeah. So well, I decided not to. Instead, I, I was like, let me make a platform because I started to plan it out and um, I realized, um, you know, I'm not a good artist, but I'm, I'm, you know, working and buying art from these artists all the time in the, in the metaverse. Uh, I'm holding art club meetups and people are coming in. And so I thought, why not build a platform for them to come in and they can make art with this instead. I see. So async art is your baby. It's like your art piece. 
Exactly, yeah. <laughs> async art is the art piece, yeah. So what has it achieved so far? Yeah, so, um, you know, it regularly hosts some of the largest crypto art collaborations in the space. You know, we have pieces in the platform that have, you know, 13, you know, artists, 20 artists, uh, and we have a couple of pieces that have like 60 plus artists all contributing a layer to it. Um, so I'm happy to share that if you'd like there, or I can keep on um, going. Um, there's, there's been a couple other first, you know, so like Async Art was the first uh, NFT to be sold at Christie's as part of a bundle. This is part of Robert Alice's Block 21 uh, Portraits of a Mind series. Um, you know, we were the first platform to give owners the power to influence storylines. Um, so there's a piece called Hi, My Name Is by Micah Johnson. Uh, and the owner of that got to, you know, have the naming rights uh, for, for a, a later movie and to decide whether the character is unveiled or not with a, with a helmet. Um, we've had some programmable comic pieces on our platform. Um, we've had a piece called Form Farm, where an artist called Untitled XYZ uses this piece as a way to govern what new creations he makes each month. Um, so it's better with visuals, but it's a piece with like 25 different shapes. And people, depending on what they change, they can govern through a rule set on what pieces he'll create each month. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we have our Async Guard has the most extensive display options, including a hardware partnership with Netgear's Mural. Uh, we have browser plugins and a native Apple TV app. Okay. So, uh... Can you um, can you introduce some of the art artwork to us? Yeah, I can share my screen. Would you like that? Yeah, it sounds very abstract. Oh, oh actually, I can't share a screen here. It says it's been disabled. Uh, oh, you can. I'm sorry. Uh, so let me. It's okay. No worries. Uh, yeah. Okay. Awesome. Let me try that. Okay. Um. Okay, yeah, so here's some of the pieces that I've mentioned. Um, this is Layer Breaker. So this is a piece with, um, you know, 60 different artists coming together and they all contributed a square to this piece. And each square has multiple states that you can choose from. And, you know, every artist brought their own aspect to it. But the cool part about this is that there's hidden states within the piece. So for instance, if all the artists were to go to the transparent, if all the owners were to go to the transparent state, then yep. the piece would reveal a message. So you can see there's kind of a message revealed in oh. these three white spots. Oh, uh, the owners, yeah. yeah, but the owners have to collaborate to, to reveal it. Um, this is a piece called Cyberwatch. Yeah. So this is a piece with, you know, like 30 plus artists called The Guild. It's kind of, cr of a crazy piece. Um, this is a piece called the Arcana Crypto Tarot. This one is cool is, is because it's, it's by a collective called WOCA, Women of Crypto Art. And there's like, I, I think like 20 plus, you know, women artists who came together and they all contributed one card. And every day this piece randomly configures to a new set of three cards and randomly decides whether they're upside down or not. So this is actually a working tarot card set. You can actually do a new reading every day based off of this, you know, the sun, the hanged man. Oh, uh, the that, that's interesting. But yeah. it's the big arcana. Exactly, yeah, it's a working tarot card. You can actually use it every day as a, as a tarot card deck to get a reading uh, because each of these cards mean different things based on the orientation and what order they come in. Yeah. Um, and, and every card was done by a different artist. Um, of course, this is the first supper um, that is behind is kind of a close up look. Um, yeah, so there's, you know, different, different uh, characters and, and abilities here. Um, so these are very, very cool. Um, I can show you another powerful piece. Um, this piece here is called Sovereignty. Here, let me pull it up. All right. Yeah, this piece is called Sovereignty. This is by an artist named Micah Johnson, who is a retired baseball player turned artist. And uh, this piece, it, it has a lot of themes, but one of his pieces, uh, themes is about, you know, a black youth in America. And the astronaut here represents like um, dreams for him. He used it a lot and um, kind of like what the kids want to be and what, what they want to achieve in life. And so this is a time sensitive piece. So every year, the door between those two kids starts to open up a little bit more. And so by the time the kids are 18 years old, the door will be fully open and the kids will be able to see their, their dream, which is the astronaut. 
And on the kid's 18th birthday, each of them, they disappear from the piece. So in 13 years from now, you know, one of the kids will disappear. And then uh, I think in like nine years, the other kid will disappear, um, revealing, you know, only the astronaut. So this piece evolves over time. But uh, why is it disappearing? You know, I think oh, for, because it, it sounds very encouraging. The story sounds very encouraging. Yeah. Well, they disappear because they're grown up. So once they turn 18, they leave the painting. Oh, oh, it's too sad. <laughs> <laughs> no, they go on to achieve their dreams. You know, that's, that's, yeah. that's, that's yeah, 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 yeah. So they are, uh, yeah, achieving, achieving their dreams. Uh, here's another piece. Habitation Sur. Uh, this is by like a Brazilian um, crypto art collective. So I think this is about 13 artists. And you can see that like, it's like this room and each one of these frames is a different piece of art by a different artist and can be owned by a different collector. Uh, someone can actually own the statue. Someone can own this statue. Um, so yeah, it's just a very powerful, you know, platform for collaborations and, and so such. Yeah, so um, can we can we call it a smart NFT? Because we can change those layers. Sure, yeah, um, you can call it a smart NFT. I think like um, we tend to refer them as to programmable art or interactive NFTs. I think a smart NFT might be something, yeah, I, you could refer to the smart NFT. Okay, so uh, uh, what's the mechanism while well, if I am a visitor of your website, oh, I want to own these, I want to yeah. own yeah, how can I use it? Sure. So one thing to note is that layer owners, when you own a layer, can only alter alter the master within the parameters that were given to them by the artist. Yeah. So if the artist gives you two states of a layer, you can only choose between those two states. Or if the artist provides you the position ability between negative five and positive ten, you can only move it between negative five and ten pixels. So you're not able to change it, you know, to whatever you want. Uh, in this sense, when you own a layer, you become part of their work yourself, as opposed to just contributing whatever you want to it. And this is powerful because, you know, people buy art for a lot of different reasons. And yeah. um, one of the ways they buy art for reasons is to express themselves. You know, we express ourselves through the art that we buy. Mm -hmm. And so with, by, able to, by, by becoming part of the art and able to alter it, it's a way for me to, you know, more deeply connect with the artist. Okay. Uh, yeah. 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 It's not, yeah. Agree. Uh, so, um, um, okay. Um, so what's your favorite one apart from this one? Uh, 